Good day and welcome to Learning Sim Sunday. Today we're going to cover basic fighter maneuvers. Scat's going to be instructing and let's go ahead and get started. Take it away, Scat. So today we're just going to be covering over some real basic um, BFM. We're going to be starting with um, some theory with some basic fundamentals as to what we're going to be looking for in offensive and defensive dogfighting. Ideally, we're going to be looking at positioning theory behind the positioning, certain numbers that we're going to be trying to focus in on, you know, key buzzwords like corner speed, PS curves, sustained uh, rates and stuff like that. Um, we're going to try and keep it all flowing so it's going to be ideally a lot less talking and a lot more doing so you'll be able to see how it's breaking down and you'll be able to see through both mine and Cole's perspective as offensive and defensive depending on that depending on you know where the maneuver set up what sort of numbers we'll be looking at and so as i said we're going to start at six and nine k perches which is basically 101 to dogfighting where you have to look at what the turning circle entry looks like you have to look at what the positioning should look like as the attacker and from the defender's point of view what the worst position you can be looking at and how to try and get out of that through jinx and overshoots um, I'll be regularly pausing the flight as I'll be hosting the server I'll be regularly pausing throughout to basically point very key specific things out as to what we should be looking at, um, what the rates are, um, if say one of us is over speeding or under speeding, how this is going to be affecting the turns, and how turning circles start to misalign. Uh, we'll then continue on through several 6Ks and several 9Ks and the key differences between the two of them. Uh, we'll then do just a couple of 1v1s and then we'll bring it to tag view which most of you are probably aware of which is like a debriefing software we'll use this to go over key elements of the fights to see what the positions look like what they should look like and where you can alter things so why perhaps going faster here would enable you to get more rate perhaps slowing down here would reduce your turning radius to get more rate stuff like that to be able to improve the um, fight to be able to improve the kill you also would be needing to consider more basic ideas such as trying not to freak out uh, stuff like that so that's pretty much what we'll be covering it should take about an hour or so maybe a little bit less and then just open the floor to questions so i'm pretty much just going to throw up a server call um from what we did before and take it away really Okay, cool. The server is up. If you're talking, I can't hear you, by the way, buddy. Hey, now I can talk. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks. Okay, so the mission's basically just going to start as we described. We're going to be uh, lying abreast off of each other. We're going to be around 12,000 feet, about 400 knots. So we're going to start up a couple of 6K perches. The purpose of the 6K perch is purely to teach um, students. In an, this is an offensive um, lesson, and it's to teach the attacking student what they should be looking at and what they should be um what geometry they should be looking at because all dogfights is a geometric battle it's all about trying to have your angles your circles all lined up 
um, to try and angle yourself in a position that you're able to get the kill. The ideal position is to be about 45 degrees off of tail, which if I go to F2, which I can't now move around for some reason, probably because the game is paused. Um, is there a better angle? Not really. I have to show you in the air, but a 45 degree aspect is somewhere about here, which doesn't make any sense to Colt, but I'm looking somewhere um, where you're at this 45 degree angle and you want to be about 0.3 of a mile. The reason for this is if he pulls up hard, you have 45 degrees up. If he pulls down, you've got 45 degrees down. So you're bang in the middle. 0.3 nautical miles means you're almost in guns kill range. That means if he slams on the brakes, you have time to over, uh, time to stop the overshoot. And if he suddenly levels out and accelerates, again, you're in a position where you can manipulate that. So this is the absolute ideal position for you to be on the bandit. And this is what the 6k perch teaches you, what that position looks like as the attacker, and to then try and hold that position whilst you have increasingly uncooperative targets. So we're going to unpause in a second. We're just going to level ourselves out, get into position. I'm going to be the defender. Colt's going to be the attacker. We'll do three sets of 6Ks. Um, and I'm just going to ramp up the difficulty and make it more difficult for Colt. The ideal for the US Navy, I think, um, started this was to be able to get the gun's kill within th uh, two circles. So within 720 degrees. So before I get the ball rolling, anyone got any questions before I get going? I'll give the stream five seconds to catch up. Need about uh, 20 seconds for streams to catch Need up. Need about 20 seconds, got it. Tiger asked, in my mind, what should DCS become to be a better sim? <sighs> That's a huge question. Um, in my mind, multiplayer is the biggest thing, so a lot more stability in multiplayer. Dedicated servers, sorting out netcode sort of stuff would be really nice. Um, and more flexibility for server admins to be able to do stuff, because at the moment we're just running into a wall where it's really stale, because you just keep doing the same shit, which is why Blue Flag is interesting. Hammer asks us if, if they were doing this stuff in uh, Air Combat USA, teaching the different perches and all. Mm. Nope. In Air Combat USA, it was literally we sat in a room, we talked for we talked to the Eagle and the Hornet pilot for sorry, Viper and Hornet pilot for a little bit. We literally just did some S turns, and then it was pretty much just fights on from there. Fair enough. Okay, we're gonna get this shit rolling. Uh, what's the shortcut for what? What's the shortcut for the uh, icons for distance? Um, Mine's disabled as well. I think it was it's normally right shift F10. Hang on. Yeah, it's been disabled for some reason. It's weird because it didn't save like my server details or anything. So I feel like DCS might have shit the bed a little bit. But here we go. Gonna unpause it now, buddy. Two. Yeah, well, it hasn't unpaused, uh, unmessed my bindings at least, so it looks like I'm flying. Okay, so lead's gonna it's Left this. shift F10. You're setting 360. Yeah, yeah 360 I'm extending. at 400 knots. If you want to sit. For 6,000. Yep. So, one, uh, 1. 1.5 mile separation. So, 9,000. It gets confusing with the 6K and the 9K. The 6K isn't how, and 9K isn't how far you are at the line of burst. That's how uh, close you want to be when the fight's on. Gotcha. So the reason for the 6K, again, like I said, is what's going to happen is we're going to do some turns, and then Colt's going to turn hot. And when Colt reaches one mile, 6,000 feet, he declares the fight's on, and then I go defensive. It's quite intuitive once you get the ball rolling. Colt, we're about set here. If you want to just pull it back to about 400 for me, buddy. Yep, trying to get up a brass here. Alright, I'm ready. Okay, lead, 35 left.
Bites on. Bites on. So he's saddling into the 45 degree here. He's holding the 45 degree. He's down to about 30 degree here, but that's not too bad because he's holding the guns kill. That's the three second guns kill, and we can knock this fight off. Knock it off. If you want to roll out, 180. 180. Want to repeat? To 1200. Yep. This time I'm going to up the G. It's holding about 4G pull right there. This time I'm going to increase the G. Um, make it a bit harder for Colt to get into that saddled position. Um, and I imagine from Colt's perspective, you could just see a nice big fat eagle just lazily sitting. Just cruising. Yeah. Okay, lead is set. Ready to turn. Copy. Flight 35 right. Fights on. Copy. Fights on. Spending a lot of speed as he comes around this turn. He's trying to recover going through. Again, I'm trying to hold up here in about 7G, but I'm slightly too slow in the entry. Colt's having to try and catch up because of that slight flight path overshoot. We're once around the circle now. Again, curse of the fuck up going through the flight path overshoot to begin with. Colt's stuck in lag right now, and I'm only here holding about 5Gs. Taking a long time to build the smash back up. Yeah. Again, holding it, just trying to hold around. I was trying to go for about 7Gs there, and I was getting about 6 on average. I've got the speed back the up, my rate's back up. We're twice around the circle, keep the fight on, we'll see if you can get it in the third circle. Okay, flight knock it off. Uh, reference uh, one five zero. One five zero. So there, the mistake was that Colt stayed uh, la uh, lead too much as he came into the turning circle, into the fight, which meant that he overshot through the tail, which meant that he had to dump a ton of speed to try and keep on my flight path, which meant that he then had no energy to sustain the turn to come round, and by the time that he had sustained the turn, we'd already gone two, three times around the circle, and as I'm still a quite cooperative target, despite holding about five, six Gs, um, it still took a very long time to recover. So we're going to go again, and this time I'm going to be an even less cooperative target, I uh, will climb back up to 12k. I'm at 12.5, we'll hold it here. Lead is set 150, 12.5, 100 knots. Two set. Okay, flight 35 right, or left. Fight's on. Can we fight something? Again, we're just repeating the same as before. This time I'm going to try and crank up the G real high this time. Colt's in a much better position at this stage. He's flying through my turning circle. The turning circles are a lot more aligned. Even up where now I'm up to almost 8G, he's able to hold it quite comfortably. 
He's trying to get to that 0.3 nautical miles and hold the gun track for 0.3 nautical miles. I'm intentionally overspeeding up here to about 500 knots, which is massively increasing the turn radius. We'll cover that in a second. Poverty, turn poverty, poverty. He just needs to hold the 0.3. Tracking, tracking, tracking. tracking. Did you hold it for the full three with the jink? Yeah, you broke it right at the end. That's no problem. Okay, let's knock it off 220. 220. You want me on right or left this time? Uh, you take the lead. You're going to be the uh, defender. I'll be the attacker. So it's up to you. Okay, I'm going to reference 240. That way we can get the spacing here. Copy 240. And climb it for 1 2. Copy. So to go over some stuff about corner and rate, just as we're setting up here, and sustained. So effectively, we, all aircraft have, we'll start with sustained, is a PS curve. It's a sustained curve. What it means, put simply, is with the aircraft at its current weight, at its current drag profile, at its current altitude, it will be able to sustain a highest amount of turn at the lowest amount of speed. So for an Eagle, for us right now, is about 475 knots, which is a sustained about 6 Gs, which is about 16 degrees a second. What that means is we can hold that speed, that G load, and that turn rate without losing energy. Your corner for the is follow. your fastest turn rate with lowest turn radius, which is a lower speed, but it isn't sustained. So we can hold, it's about, for us, it's going to be about 400 knots, because we're quite light and we're very clean. It's going to be about 400 knots, and um, I'll tighten up now, Colt, sorry. Uh, it's about 400 knots, and we'll be able to hold a 9G turn, and that will give us about 26 degrees a second. The problem is, is we'll start to bleed speed quite quickly there. So what you want to be doing is constantly keeping your speed between um, PS and corner. Normally corner, because you can, especially in an Eagle, pull that speed up quite a bit more. Um, you want the higher turn rate. It, it gets It gets a bit messy. Let me throw it back here because I overshot the uh, uh, line of breast. What kind of G do you want for this turn? Uh, just a comfortable like 4-5, just a cooperative nice, target. Nice warm so up. Can, yeah. <laughs> just so I can start to show and like pause at different angles and stuff. Okay, I'm pretty much ready when you are. Call the ball. Sorry, I was doing stream stuff. No worries. All right. Check right through 35 degrees. Copy. Hang up. What I'm going to be doing here is, like with Colt, turning through the 35, then continuing on. I'm going to try and hold the 400 knots as I turn in. I'm going to be going all the way to pure at this point, and once I'm at one mile, I'll be calling the fight song, which we are fight song. Now, the whole idea here is for me to try and sit into this um, 45 degree angle. Colt's going to be a nice cooperative target for us. We're just going to try and pull it in. You're not going to have labels on normally, so the easiest way to tell how close you are to the bad guy is through the gun pipper and how much it decreases. Where the full gun pipper is two miles, one gun pipper is hot, uh, one mile, so on and so forth. So we're getting quite close here. I'm overspeeding quite a bit just because I'm talking. But right, we're going to pause. So here, I'm a bit too close and I'm slightly off angle. But I'm relatively close to this 45 degree, which you'll see in the tank view track when we debrief. Um, again, from Colt's perspective, I'm in a pretty scary position. Uh, imagine if Colt's looking over his shoulder right now. Um, probably real fucking scary. Um, looking right up at the bore. Yeah, so my nose has pulled lead right here, which means I'm about ready to start shooting. I'm a bit too fast and I'm closing quite a bit. And if I look down at my um, radar, I've got 75 knots closure, which is a bit scary in case of an overshoot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it at this angle with the gun pipper on the aircraft for about three seconds to just ensure that enough bullets are fired to ensure the kill. Um, again, in this position, you can see that it doesn't matter whether he rolls to the left, whether he rolls to the right, whether he pulls up hard, if he suddenly shunts negative G, whatever he does, I've got an ideal amount of room to be able to maneuver around him to try and prevent any sort of overshoots from happening. So we're going to unpause it in three, Colt, and then we're going to continue the fight. Three, two, one, fight on. The angle here is a bit too low, but one, two, three, let's kill, knock it off. We've got a little bit too low there, 
in the, at the very end as we flat plated out, but he wasn't really pulling too much, so it doesn't really matter too much. Setting up reference 300, 412,000. Tell me 300. Okay, so. Okay, check right to 335. I'll be checking right. Oh, slightly out the line of breast, but shouldn't be a problem. Flies on. This time so I'm going to bring it up a little bit not more. To pull too much lead, because if I pull too much lead, that means I'm going to overshoot, because I'm going to have too much turning to do. If I pull too much lag, then again I've got too much to catch up on the other way. Right, so I'm over speeding. Here, My pilot's really working for it, Colts but he's just dragging it right in. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. I've got the 400 knots. I'm pretty much right at corner here. I'm holding the six Gs. I'm almost in an ideal position, but my turning circle is slightly out. So if I just reel it in a little bit, try not to lose the G threshold. Right now, I'm at too high of an angle. I can force it, though, and get a saddle to about here. So we're now almost perfect. That's a little bit shoddy there as I run, reach forwards for the pause. Colt, what were you pulling through that, like, 6, 7G? It varied. I was trying to walk over my shoulder, but uh, watch over my shoulder. It was between 5 and 7 to 8. So here, again, we're, I'm slightly too low, but that's okay because I'm trying to retain a higher energy state to try and get, well, not higher energy state, I'm trying to burn through Gs faster and need the altitude to be able to do it. Um, but I'm still at this angle. I'm at this, like, 45-degree angle. Do I have a so I gained almost a thousand in this mode. No, but you can push uh, can... left alt C. Uh, not on F two. I can't. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, you can pretty much see it's more or less a forty-five. It's slightly more than a forty-five. Uh, we're probably at like fifty-five here, but um, it's, but a forty-five degree angle would be in line. Um, He's a little farther back. back. That's the fifty-five degree. I'll hopefully recover it because when I unpause, I'm either going to massively over yank the stick or not enough, and Colt's going to pull away. But we'll see what happens. Three, two, one. So we're holding it here. It's not quite point three. We're nearly there. Okay, one, two. Three, that's a gun skill. Knock it off, two, two, uh, two zero zero. That'll be two zero zero. And descending for 12. With a fucking blue dot under your aircraft, I always think you've got your gear out. Right? So, was that reference two zero zero? A firm. Copy. I'm going to tighten up the line of breast this time to make sure nothing's fucked up on the fight's beginning. Okay, ready on you. Check left 165. And fight on. Now I'm going to try and hold PS as we go around the circle. 
a little fast. That allowed me to burn a ton of speed in order to be able to get the G's required in order to tidy it up. In a less cooperative target. IG turn. Cot was still turning real hard. We're on the threshold of going too far below corner as we go past 350 knots. It's real tempting to shove it here, but you sh probably shouldn't uh, because if you shove the stick, you're going to bleed a lot of speed. It might give you the opportunity for a single snap. But if you relax it off, because he's had to burn all of the energy as well in order to be able to do the same stuff. If you relax it off and you regain the speed, he's in a defensive position where he's probably not going to want to do that. So if you relax the stick off, you can gain the energy. A little above corner here. Now we're back up here at 7.5G again, quite easily. And we're still above 350 knots. So we're still pretty much, we're slightly below corner, but not threateningly below. We're reeling him in. This is going to take longer than two circles. See, he's going in. just a little bit slower here. I'm now bingo. We might want to knock this off in a sec. Give it one more circle. Bingo fuel. Bingo fuel. Yeah, he's at high speed, so he's able to use the energy a lot more. The only option we have here is to go through the vertical. To try and use ground to speed to this out. Now Colt's going up into the vertical. She might have the speed to be able to use. Tracking. No. A little bit of rotto. Yeah, I'm doing all this flying, and he's just always right there, 45 degrees off my wing. Tracking. And I yanked the stick Tracking. back real hard. Tracking. Knock it off. Knock it off. 150. 150, bingo. So even in a... in a quite controlled in a quite level environment you still have difficulties in getting into these positions where if the target is just constantly turning in a flat plane and that's what's perhaps quite unintuitive is where you have the ability to be able to hold these fights through simply just turning in a controlled circle whereas you know, when we are fighting, we're very quick to yank on the stick, start pulling a ton of G, and all of a sudden, we've lost. Watching the airspeed tape knots, just drop. The bad guy just has plummet. that energy to be able to hold that circle. Uh, you want to turn towards home plate? My F10 seems to have all screwed up, or oh, just grabbing your jets probably. Either or. Let's grab new jets. Give the stream a minute or so to chat amongst themselves. So this would be a good time to come up with some questions. I propose that you drop them in so scats. Any questions, because I don't have two monitors, so I can't look at both at the same time. Uh, no, uh, not a real pilot. Just too much time to play video games, I guess. Dedicate yourself to the study of energy and its management in a fourth gen fighter? <laughs> Pretty much. But I mean, given the industry you intend to work, Makes sense. Quite. It's just good customer service to understand the needs of your customer base. 
Um, you want to turn 180? Sure. We'll reference out that way. Because you're six miles lead. Oh, I can just grab a new one when you do. I was just killing time while they ask questions. Uh, yeah, let's quickly grab new ones. It'll be faster that way. So here we're going to be setting up for the 9k perch. The 9k perch's purpose is to get the pilot to the stage we were just in. Before we were at the ideal, as the attackers uh, caught to begin with, and then as me, we're in the ideal position where we're already on the bandit. Um, Defense industry. Already inside his turning Degra. circle, and to be able to then control the fight and to win the fight from being in that position. The 9k purchase to get you to that stage. It might seem a bit bizarre that an extra 3,000 feet would make the difference, but it really does and it teaches you where this window, you have this moving window through the turning circle that you can fly through, and if you fly through the wrong part of the window, it's the best Like I demonstrated with that first one. Yeah, like you showed in the first one, you're all out of all out of whack. Your turning circles are massively misaligned. It's quite unintuitive in words and even through flying, but in the tech view that will debrief, it'll become very quick to see. I'm uh, 400 knots coming up to 12,000 now at 360. And we're looking pretty good. I'm just going to pause here and just quickly triple check the streams. Yeah, I plan to be working for one of the uh, one of the big um, military industries. Guys, keep thinking of questions as we okay. go. Have them typed Ready? up. That. Three, two, one, hit that. Okay. 35 left. So the opening here is the exact same, apart from the fact that the fight begins at 1.5 miles. Um, and we'll just fly through the exact same and we'll see what happens. Fight's on. Copy, fight's on. Again, I'm going to hold a nice, comfortable 4G cooperative turn. See, now Colt's at the position he was at before, and if ideally he had set himself up through the turning circle entry correctly, flown through that window correctly, he should be exactly where the 6K perch begins, and can now get himself through what we taught in the 6K perch to hold 0.3 at 45 degrees for the 3 seconds, which is what that is. Let's knock it off uh, 240. Zero. Um, and can successfully get the gun skin. The reason it's important is because when your target isn't pulling a nice comfortable flat 3-4G turn, getting inside the turning circle can be very tricky. Um, because it is a very definite and quite small window to fly into, and when the target is constantly moving, his turning circle is constantly moving, so is the window. Which leads to big overshoots in the flight path, or I'm using a lot of technical words, but I don't know the easier way of putting it than that. A flight path overshoot is where effectively you're flying through their flight path. There's a 3 9 overshoot where you're flying basically across their wings, and then you have a nose overshoot where you overshoot the nose. Okay, Colt, you ready? That. Okay, flight 358. The word I'm saying is perch, like to perch on the target, to be able to get yourself into the perch position. Fight's on. Can we fight some? So we're just going to crank it up here to about six, try and hold six and a half G. Over G, over G, over G, over G. And the turning circle entry was a bit off by Colt there. Hence Overshot, too much lead. Yep, yeah, 
through the uh, fly path overshoot, which means he wasn't in the position that he was in through the 6k, which now means he has even more work to catch up on. The target is nice and cooperative though, and Colt is Nice and relaxed, building, building my energy. Now I've got extra energy, I'm translating that for rate. Point three nautical to make, uh, point 0.1 nautical, which he's now at. He's got to get the gun centered, count for the three. One, two, three. And knock it off, uh, we'll 360. The perch is just the setup, Shano. So Shano asks, back. what's perch mean? I, um, I said it's just the setup. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's the setup, and then it then leads into the saddle. The saddle is that 45 degree at 0.3 nautical miles. So the setup is called the perch, and then the saddle is then the position that you want to be in at the 45 degree. Uh, we're set here. Leads ready. Two cent. Copy. 35 left. Fight's on. Copy, fight's on. So I'm going to yank three or one to get into the turning circle. See if he can hold it. No, nope. nope. yank through the turning circle, threw him off, and he fucked I'm up taking a nap. Yeah, tried to pull real hard. Do you want to knock it off right here? Yeah, we can see how bad it's fucked me. I'll be. See, he's already come back around, because I got too aggressive and pulled too hard, and my pilot took a nap. Oh, we're separated off now enough that we're head to head. That's why we don't trust snaps. That's why we like nice, comfortable, slow trigger pulls. Now we're almost back to dealing with like 6k perch stuff, where Colt's got an energy advantage and a height advantage, and a, and a deficit of both. It's about trying to reel in through that position. Colt's abusing the speed advantage to uh, take a vertical climb. Turning some of that extra smash into rate as I bring it through the bottom here. And all I can do is try and cut the turning circle up. And try not to overshoot. Which I'm going to do right here. This is a 3-9 overshoot. Oh, this is scary. We're into the scissors. And he's got to break it because we're out of vertical. And I'm trying to put some smash back on the airframe or airframe while he disengages. Very nice or extends, I should say. So we reverse the fight and we're about halfway around each other's circle. In fact, I think he's about a little bit further around the circle than I am. I need to relax this pull here to try and build the speed to get the rate because right now I'm under corner which means I can't pull hard enough which means I can't rate fast enough because I'm stuck here at like 4.5G. Colt probably still has the speed advantage. Now that we've got the speed back up we can start to pull back on the G. Little fast here. See, now he's paying real close attention to his proper speed. Things can get a little bit dull when we're in this level turn. Trying to eke out degrees on each other. 
This is just like a quarter inch of pole that I'm varying here. And if I see that I've been retarded, like right there, I haven't been pulling quite hard enough. I'm having to pull it out one notch of burner. Now it's coming back in. You know what? One, two. Poverty, poverty. It's interesting that you had the angle there. From my perspective, it didn't look like you had it. But if you had it, you had it. Yeah, I had two seconds and then walked it off. Tracking. This is a gun skill right here, surely. Yeah, just a full pipper. Ow. I couldn't hold it, but I would have cut you apart. Ow. Knock it off. Knock it off. You wanna grab any jets because I'm almost bingo? Yep. Okay, let's uh, do fly level, uh, fight, uh, fly level 12, uh, 360. Still two set, and I'm yep. defensive this time, yeah? Yep. We've got the labels turned on because it makes it really easy to get the lateral deconfliction set up. It's hard to, to judge without having binocular vision or uh, the ability to gauge depth very well. Okay, I'm ready. I'm a little wide, but set otherwise. Check him for 035. Okay, wait. Tiny right. Fox 2, Fox 1. Okay, right nice here. easy just pull. Doing a mistake. I'm just going to hold the nose directly on the bad guy. He's a cooperative bad guy though, so it kind of worked. It kind of shouldn't have, but it's a very cooperative bad guy. Um, this is a three second trigger pull here, Colt, if you want to knock it off. Knock it off. Uh, one zero zero. Copy one zero zero. Yeah, this time I'm just going to go full hot fight mode and just pretty much stay lead or pure the whole way in, just to show how quickly the the bad guy seems like he's in a real nice position, but he isn't, and all of a sudden. You're massively overshooting. Okay, I'm set. Well, I need to tidy up the line. Okay, I'm set. Set. Checking left 065. Copy left. I go on track, you got you really fast. Fight on Fox 2. Building up the smash. He's gonna pretty much stay pure the whole way in here. As he's a lot Comes more the G. target. And I'm trying, and I'm trying, and I'm trying, and I'm trying, and that beautiful positioning is all faded. And now all of a sudden he's way out there, 
I'm trying to catch it up. See, I pulled too hard there. I bled my speed off. Cool. What's your speed right now? Uh, 375. 375. So uh, 385. You're 385. So you're pretty much at corner, a little bit on the corner. I'm at 250. Yep. So right now, Colt has pretty much all of the advantage. He's got an altitude. Let's have a look at Colt. Colt's only up here at 4Gs. I'm at 5Gs. Um, he's got a very slight altitude advantage. A couple hundred feet, nothing to talk home about. But he's got over a 100 knot lead on me right here. Which sucks. Um, because And it sucks at this speed. Because the Eagle is able to gain speed or lose speed depending on the speed that it's at. So if I'm at, say... 500 knots and I pull 4 G's I'm still going to gain speed I'm going to gain up to six, 700 knots if I'm at 500 knots, if I'm at 400 knots if I start to get below corner, all of a sudden you're not able to gain that speed back anymore and where I'm here at 250 knots, if I hold this 4.5 G pull, even at full afterburner even though I'm completely clean, even though I'm not even max fuel, I won't be able to gain the speed and he'll continue to pull away from me, so my only choice here because you can see on the HUD, I'm at 30 AOA. I'm pulling 30 AOA to try and hold this. Colt, what AOA are you at? I got you. 19. Reading. Yeah. By by the numbers, it looks more like about yeah. 12. Yeah, it's because the uh, F-15's HUD has uh, 10 more AOA units, so technically I'm at like 22 or something. But the the HUD sort of matters. So Colt has half my AOA. So he's just going to pull away. He, he's he got enough speed that at his G, he'll be able to continue to accelerate. We're going to unload here. That unpause here. Three, two, one. I'm relaxing my pull, building that smash back up. Relaxing cool. the pull, I'm building my smash back up. Now I'm making use of my speed and altitude advantage, bringing it a little more vertical. I'm going to force him to try and bleed even more of his energy. As he tries to keep the nose high and put it put it on lead there. The biggest problem here, I'm gonna have to repause it again. Okay. Beyond anything else, the biggest problem here is the positioning of our turning circles. Now it's a lot easier to see when we debrief this, but your turning circle is a post that sticks out of your airplane. So from me. I'm zooming out. My turning circle, I, I'm trying to point, but you can't really see. My turning circle is somewhere in one of those buildings down there, right? So if I fly, continue to fly this circle, that's the circle that I'm going to fly around. That's the post that I'm going to fly around. That's the center of my turning circle. Colt's turning circle, if I zoom in on Colt and zoom out, his is this way. So you can see there's a huge, like, mile difference between our two turning circles, which means that Ideally, I want to be flying in the same plane. My aircraft wants to be somewhere lag back here, moving in. Unfortunately, my airplane is somewhere over here. And that's because I fucked up that turning circle entry. It's because I overshot, and it's because I've had to scramble to try and get into a better position. If I let the circles line themselves up a bit more, life becomes a bit easier. But the problem is, how do we get the circles to line up? That's what I'll try and do now. Colt, don't pull like more than like five and a half G, and I should be able to do this. Okay. Three, two, one. I'm just going to extend here. I'm relaxing the G, and I'm just letting myself fall more in line with his turning circle. It's a lot easier because obviously a cooperative bandit. But he's, I mean, he's like 1.2 miles away, and that seems a bit scary. It seems like he's getting out ahead, but it's not too bad because we're gaining in on that turning circle. Because we're flying the same sort of post, our posts are a lot more lined up. It means that I'm able to fly exactly the path that he's flying. If he had a like tap out some slow flares, Colt, I might be able to easily show. Like smoke pods would be quite nice here. You'd be able to see. But I'll be like flying through where the smoke, his flares are coming out. You can see we're basically lined up, and if I tap them out at the same time... You can see our flares are pretty much coming out next to each other. Our flight paths are pretty much aligned at this point. I'm still a little bit further to the right than him, but that's okay because I'm in an offensive position. Um, and you can see how 
make sure the bandit relaxed and made life easy for me and didn't defend. But instead of continuing to force this really aggressive pure or lead pursuit where I'm having to pull 35 AOA to try and shove myself into an offensive position to try and get a snap, instead I can relax. I'm already in an offensive position. He's having to defend me. There's no rush. Tidy it up. Tidy up the lines, tidy up the angles, and the fight should win itself. I'm going to unpause when you're ready, Cole. Yeah. Now I can just reel him in. One, two, three. If you want to knock it off, two zero zero. Two zero zero. And descending for 12. Copy, descending for 12. I'm actually going to pause it here and see if the stream has anything they want to say, because we did cover quite a lot quite quickly. Word. Yeah, Lumber, you are right. In my position, I could extend an escape. Um, assuming that he is out of heaters or out of missiles, or there's friendlies close enough by, or something else. If the situation demands it, you can, or if you're in a position to run, run. Um, I mean, that's a decision you have to make when you hit the merge. As soon as you two merge, you can run. That's pretty much your best position to run is when you merge, because he has to come all the way around the circle, and then some, to be able to get into a position. Obviously, if he has missiles, he's able to do that. Um, but yeah, um, we'll, br we'll probably bring it to tack for you here, Colt, if that's okay. Yeah, it sounds great. Gonna close the server down. It's going to upload my track to your uh, team speak. Which one are you putting it in? Um, the Learning Sim Sunday one that I can access. Okay. Um, Tiger, when I was doing Air Combat USA, I was pulling 6G. Um, Chunks didn't quite manage 6G. <laughs> um, but yeah, 6, I think, is the highest I've pulled in real life. Colt, what's the highest G you pulled in real life? Oh, probably 2.8 or 3. Is that the G rating of your paper? Yeah. Now, what was the other question? What modules are Colt and I most excited for? Colt, what module are you most excited for? Right now, the F5. Yeah, I'm going to Because that's the got the most shortly. feasible release date. Beyond that, F18, F14, basically all the American 4th gens. My server's up. Ready for you to join when you're ready, Colt? Um, the files transferred. What's the number on it? Uh, uh -huh. 201605 it ends in 2218. Oh, okay. I thought that was in there previously. Downloading. Yeah, the F5 is a fun dogfight plane, and it'll be fun to fly aggressor for. Uh, Tomcat would be interesting. Um, okay, we're watching. 
Cool. All right, let's skip forwards as we just fly around. Okay, right. So here we are. We're set up for our first... Um, you can see everything fine, yeah? And the laser point is working. Yep. I'm just resizing the windows here. I put the charts up for later. Cool. So we're starting the fight here. Uh, we'll focus mostly from Colt's perspective. More times to speed it. So Colt's moving in here. I'm turning. He calls the fights on here. This is where we begin to fight. So, um, you can see by this number here what the angle of my tail is. This is the 45 degrees that I've been talking about. As you can see here, it's pretty aggressive, the difference that this is going to make. He's at the right range. The angle was kind of off. So this is where he's holding it. This, on the other hand, is a lot better. We're at like 40 degrees here. He's having to pull a lot of G in order to be able to maintain that. And the reason is, earlier in the fight, as we can see, my turning circle, this is the post I saying that comes out of the airplane, and this is his post. So my turning circle is somewhere around here, his turning circle is somewhere around here. So his circle that he's currently flying, I mean, it obviously changes as he flies, but at this instance right here, his turning circle comes up around like this. My turning circle comes up around like this. There is an intercept point, a very small one for the snap, which is pretty much where Colt flies through. But if his aircraft was further down this way, it flew in through here, this 45 degrees would be met faster and with a lot less G. But because, as we can see, this angle is getting quite aggressive and the difference in the turning posts, he has to make up this difference. The only way he can make that up is by shoving a ton of G, which is what happens right here. He's pulling two or three, you know, two times as much G as I need to in order to now you can see, now that we're lined up in this position, our turning circles are almost next to each other. I mean, obviously his is a little bit further this way because of the angle difference, but we're pretty much there. Can you zoom out and show him the vertical view of, with the flight pads there? The vertical view with the flight pads? Yep. Oh, yeah, sure. How they separate, uh, then converge. Yeah. Uh, how do I extend this here? Here we go. I think if you just zoom out and look from above, yeah. So you can see if I scroll back, what I was saying before, look at the differences in the turning circle. You can see my turning circle here is this huge, great big thing right here because it's gentle cheese, and his turning circle is way inside mine. And that's okay to be inside the turning circle as long as you don't end up with the angles not being quite right because he has to pull all of this G to make up this different distance right here. The only way I could pull that scary. much extra G is to have extra speed there, too. Yeah. If I pulled the exact same amount of G that he did in that situation, he gains nothing in there. It, it, my turning circle tightens, his turning circle tightens, he's still stuck inside, and because I've got that more turning room, I can continue that for longer, and he ends up turning inside himself, and then... Then I'm out of speed. Out. He's out of speed, and he falls out. He runs out of energy. So if we fast forward again, the fight begins again. So there's the 35, the check 35. He then continues on, and then we're at the fights on stage. This is where I crank a bit more G. And you saw before, I was at like 4-ish. Here I'm only at 5G. Um, the angle's way off. The angle, the, I think this is the one where you cocked it up in the first fight, because you can see the huge turning circle difference right here. This is where if we, we can see the mistake in the flight paths early, oh shit, not that far back, earlier on, where we begin the check, we begin the fights on. I should have kept my nose coming over to here. Uh, the fight and starts then started my turn here, and this is but I kept I the nose, nose on and ahead of him for too long. Bit as you're thinking about this fight's on. Yep. And it'd be okay if the G's were level, because if my if I'm not pulling, I mean you have all the room in the world. But as I start to pull, all of a sudden you can see my turning circle comes out here, your turning circle comes out here. So I'm coming round this circle here. And I've you're got way inside this turning circle. You've got so little room to turn. You've got this here to turn through, and it's nothing. 
if you had extended and let yourself just fall into the turning circle, all the room in the world. But instead, you're pulling 7 Gs, and before that was okay, because you were doubling my G limit. But right now, you're not really doubling it, and you're having to bleed a ton of speed. Saying that, you're still at 450 Mine's just deceded, uh, uh, descended through your speed. I had a uh, bunch going in. Yeah, that, you... that big pull to try and get the alpha to, to tighten my turn circle, it, it killed all my smash. Yeah, that was probably perhaps I can't the even English right now. Overspeeding, um, coming into the fight a bit too fast meant that your turn rate wasn't um, high enough, and your turn radius was too large. So my circle, my actual turn rate, uh, my let's have a look um, at this fight beginning. Where are we? This is pretty much the beginning of the fight. You're at the highest speed. I'm holding five G. Yeah, this seems to be so like right about here-ish. So you can see there's like a 50-ish knot difference between us. I'm pulling 5G and you're pulling about 4G. Uh, the turn radius size is T, R, D value. My turn, ra my turn circle is half yours. I mean, I'm pulling like 2G, a bit more 2G than you. But the speed difference is also, and as your speed increases, so sorry guys, I just realized that was screwed up. The same G, our speed is kind of the same, and our turn radius is kind of the same. But I have slightly more turn rate than you. I've got about an extra degree a second of turn rate than you, um, because of the difference in the speed. And as we continue, you're able to recover it because you're able to pull more G, and as your speed starts to decrease. But even though you had that extra energy and you're able to shove that much more G, you couldn't do it because you were too fast. You recover it though, and the turn radius, uh, the turning circles kind of overline themselves. This right here, this is the flight path overshoot that I keep mentioning. It's where you literally fly through. You always want to try and be inside the circle, not too much inside the circle, because as we just mentioned, you have to pull crazy maneuvers to try and resolve it but you don't want to fall out of their circle because if he crossed here and our airplanes are like here I can reverse here and I can force him to be in a defensive position he's lucky though because if I zoom back when we crossed again I'm being a cooperative target but there's quite a bit of distance between us there's what 2,000 feet which is kind of enough if this was a thousand feet I might be able to reverse it here because there's not a lot of room that he can maneuver through. But then I'm being a corruptive target. We continue around the circles, and I don't think we ever win. You ever win this fight, Dean? I think we knocked this one off. Yeah, that was our third turn. Came around and knocked off. Yeah. So pretty much it was fucked from the get-go because regardless of what happens here, he had to continue to burn. The I had speed. to stay outside to try and build that smash up. And he's forever outside the turn shrink the turning circle. See, he's always outside my turning circle, and I'm able to hold it small enough. See, my turn, no, my uh, radius, my turning circle smaller than yours. So even though we're pulling the same turn rate, we're identical turn rates. Um, because you're 80 knots faster than me, your turn radius is 0.2 nautical miles bigger, and that means you're always on the outside. And then this is the next one where I get a bit more aggressive. This time I don't. This time I don't think I overshoot as bad. Holding about the right angle coming through here. Yeah, you see the turn. You're lining up a lot more comfortably with the turning circle. So, I mean, it's hard to measure. I wish I could had a ruler to be able to measure this right here, but I imagine it's a lot smaller than so what we're. 5,000 like feet. Like 2,000 feet, probably. Or 5,000 feet range. What if we go back to the one beforehand when this fight began? See? See the difference? Like, you're needing to get to about here. You're about 2,000 feet. Whereas before, it was a lot gentler. And I'm not being more gentle on the stick. I'm still up here at the fight on mark, which we're calling. You're... I'm pulling the G and you're pulling, but you're not going crazy lead. You're letting yourself fall into lag, and you're letting these turning circles line up. 
So even though I'm pulling more G this time than I was last time, I'm up here at 7.5 G, you're able to hold this position. You're at 33 degrees, which is fine because you're needing to sacrifice that ideal angle to be able to hold the fight. It's fine, everything is a sacrifice. You're allowed to make uh, cock stuff up if you're doing it for a reason. Um, you're at the 3,000. Uh, you're coming up to the point 0.2, which is here. Uh, point three, sorry, which is here, and you're holding pretty well. Even though you're up here at like 9G, you're still holding it through the turning circle. And again, our turn rates, uh, turn radiuses are about the same. I have a bit more turn rate at this instance, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, you're holding the position pretty much beautifully. This is where I then, the last second, do a reversal. And I think I knock it off here. What's this fight? Oh, this is where I'm the attacker. So from my perspective, to you... Turning in, letting myself fall lag. Letting myself just fall straight comfortably into your flight path. Holding You're the same thing, the he's same holding NFGs. about 30 degrees off. And now he's pulling lead, reeling me in. And that's what we call the knock it off. I think. Maybe I'm talking here when we call the knock off. Yeah, I, I think you were talking and then said that that was the second. And then we go again, this time it's a more aggressive. Loading by Colt. Do I mess this one up? I don't think I missed any of them up. This is where I'm a lot more lag at uh, lead. And you notice the mistake that that caused me. I think this is why I fucked this one up. Um, see, I'm going pure right here, which is causing me to have to shove a lot of G in order to be able to tidy this up. Um, but I'm able to hold it. Colt's got a pretty big speed advantage, which is not really an advantage here, because as we can see, he's pulling one and a half times more, uh, one and a half more G than me. But his turn radius is bigger than mine, and his turn rate is basically the same, which means that I win, because whoever has the smallest turn radius and turn rate wins. So. This is why I'm able to reel him in. Even though he's pulling more G, even though he's faster than me, I can continue to make this closure. Well, I'm not actually closing, but I'm able to hold the offensive position. And here's where I get the closure, because I crank some more G. And then I hold it right here for the three seconds, I think. All through this, I was well over 500 knots speed yeah. around the outside. Surprised that this wasn't me calling the fight here. But... I think you were talking about how I was going so fast and it was making it hard for me. And and then the final one. Again, this is a lot more aggressive assault by a defense by Colt. Uh, Thanks for the follow. This is where I try and avoid the flight path overshoot with a 9G pull. I just about managed to hold it. I'm at the right range. I'm at the right angle. You see here I'm at like 41 degrees. I'm at the perfect range. I'm at the perfect angle. It's now just about trying to hold the pipper for the three seconds. I don't think I can hold the paper for the three seconds as the nose is falling through. I don't think I've got the speed for it. I think I'm too slow here. I think I was mentioning that I was having to slow down. Uh, I was having to relax the G to be able to build up the speed. I lost too much energy in that 9G pull. 
which now means Colt has a faster turn rate of a couple of degrees than me, which is now why he's pulling out through the circle. I've now flight path overshoot shot by a little bit, trying to retain some of that sp energy. Colt has a huge energy advantage here, which is why he's able to hold that AG. As I said earlier, if you're faster, you're able to pull more and keep the speed or to accelerate. And I'm unfortunately not in that position where I can do that. I think we knock this one off. Do I get the kill on the end or do we knock it off? We'll probably knock it off here because this is a some pretty shoddy flying. Or do we turn this into a fight? I think we probably turned it into a fight. I think I was declaring bingo here. Yeah, cause, well, we couldn't have done the fight here because we did it over land, didn't we? This where we set up for the 9k. Okay. So here's where the fight begins. Now Colt has to make up and get into that position where he was at before, whilst I'm defending. So this right here should look like what it looked like before. And the turning circle entry should look the same, so it should look like those beginnings of the 6k kind of does and it's a little bit too far this way I think but looks fine um, it's about trying to then get into this nice turning circle shoves quite a bit of G to do it there's quite a lot of G to do it perhaps overspeeding on Colt's part is up to the 570 knots so I'd imagine an overspeed was the cause of that but holds the saddle and gets the kill right there Again, the fight begins in a minute. The fight's on as I shove the 6G. Colt I'm almost flying. perpendicular. I'm getting cocked yeah. up here. Yeah, this is going to cause a big flight path overshoot. Even if he holds the 9G, I'll be surprised if he can avoid the flight path overshoot. Nope, there's the overshoot. And now Colt has a lot of work to do. I'm overspeeding a little bit here, um, not massively, but a little bit. Manages to get back inside the turning circle with a lot of G. It's recovering the position. We knock it off there. So Colt managed to get the um, from this outside position. Managed to burn a lot of speed, and I oversped was able to then get back inside the turning circle to secure the position but a lot of G was required in order to do it and again relative uh, cooperative target so he's able to push up to 8G almost 9G here to be able to do it because the bandit is only holding 6G in a nice level 10 this is where you make the mistake again and you black out and trying to make the turn because you're perpendicular here again this flight path is so small you've got such small turning room to move through yeah this is where you shove all the way up to 11g and i bet you still overshoot perhaps maybe because of the blackout but i bet you still overshoot you could have maybe made it. This is where you've obviously blacked out and you're leveling. Yep. Taking and a little I'm, nap. And I'm pulling, what, 5G here? Yeah. How much? Yeah, your pilot's nice and comfortable just cruising along for a Sunday flight. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm at high G here, and then I'm at 5, and mm -hmm. you're... Yeah. Then this is where I then reverse. I make the decision to just see what happens if we reverse the fight. We're now merged. 
Can the merge parameters were both way over speeding? And we kind of go for a really odd fucked up one circle that involves some vertical crap. And we merge again. I think this one's a bit of a better merge. This one you have a slight speed advantage, but not massively. Um, and we're at much more sensible speeds. I think this is where I fuck up and I shunt a whole bunch. Yeah, I do a high G pull up, which fucks up all of my speed. You do the dive and you retain the speed. I'm able to cut through the turning circle here, though. And like we saw earlier, like we saw with Colt, in the vertical. Imagine this was the. Um, in the horizontal plane, like with Colt trying to get through the turning, look how much, how little room I have to try and make this turn. There's, there's none. I could pull all the G in the world, I would not be able to make this turn to come up. To ignoring having to turn this way, just to try and get the aeroplane to come vertically up through this turning circle. I can't do it. I go for the one snap, just to demonstrate that snaps are crap. And again, I'm shoving up at eight. I like snapshots. If you've got a feel for it, so, uh, take the shot. A um, fly path overshoot. So Colt just reverses here. Is this where we end up in the scissors? Not I think it's the it. the initiation of the scissors. That starts our rolling moment because I've got the speed. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. got all of the speed and the altitude advantage right here. Yeah. I'm still right up about quarter Adjust speed. About maintain the offensive positioning, but. I'm just trying to use that offensive position to try and force Colt to make a mistake. Because right now... I'm still climbing. I'm, I'm accelerating. Position. And he is accelerating also, but he's descending. So we're separating vertically. And this Colt's is where... to do a nice spiral climb just to gain more energy. And then uses that energy to come back down. As soon as I get him nose high and bleed some more of his smash, circle right here, I translate a lot of that right speed here. into angle. But you're able to keep with me. This is where the... Vertical scissors begins. Let's shorten these tails a little bit. You come out of the vertical scissors in a much better position. I should probably have. I'm outside his turning circle here, but he had to pull out because we ran out of vertical space in that descending angular spiral scissors. Here. You can reverse here and fall in line with me, continuing the circle. I don't know, because right here, you've obviously got a three-quarter circle lead. You've only got a quarter of the circle to go. I've got to go three-quarters of the circle. If I reverse, looking at the speeds, you're probably slow enough that it would have been okay for you. If I reverse, you could probably have sat in inside me. You have a big speed. Okay, I'm, I'm building the smash back up here. I'm not chasing him. Well, with my the turn nose, radius is a lot smaller. I'm trying to keep my jet my around the higher, outside. Surprising. But I am. But what's your airspeed trending for that? Um, positive, but low. Which is why that quarter circle has now become a third to half a circle. So now you can see my airspeed's trending back down. Well, it was trending back down. I'm translating more you're of that speed to rate, angle. Though, as you put in the higher G, because you got the higher speed. Uh, I'm yeah, the, to the higher speed, to pull such a high speed multiplies through the G and transfers into rate there. More energy to be able to pull more. I'm just walking it around nice and easy. That's where we just kind of fly around in circles and we do a bit of high yo yoing to build some more energy. Because I was a little above turn speed here, I kept the nose a little high, and that allowed me to transfer some of my extra speed into the energy battery that is altitude. Once I had a little extra altitude, I can bring the nose down and pull a little harder, and I can make a higher rate turn with higher G. Uh, yeah, I think I had the tracker for like one and a half, and then you, you deflected there. Yeah, that was a real high angle shot right there. See, I'm high. See, I'm getting higher. I'm storing up more of this extra airspeed and altitude. 
That's going to let me bring the nose down and make a higher rate turn without bleeding as much energy or as much speed. Yeah, you should see his turn rate go real high right here. I imagine this is probably going to punch through probably 25 degrees to make this turn. No, but the turn radius gets real small. Oh, if you, you've relaxed the G as well. I mean, this... Oh, fuck. Um... This is where you go up, and this is where you shove the big pull, right? I thought there was one that I just really held back on it, but I'm not seeing it yet. Watch how my airspeed's just coming off. Now his airspeed's climbing, yeah. and mine is descending. He's up to 20... Yeah, this is why I was thinking this big pull right here. This is yeah, that's the one. Pull, the 27. And you're pretty much bang on corner. You're a little bit under corner, actually, but not by a huge amount. Um, I've just decelerated through then, corner speed. Reversal or do something. He bled a bunch to force the reversal. Stall. Yeah, this is why I stalled the aircraft. Yep, he's down right to flight speed barely, and I'm right up over the top. But because I'm on his tail, I'm still in the advantageous, or advantageous position, and now we're working the rudder to try and keep the nose on. Yeah, and that's where we enough. call it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where I had just a face full of eagle. So he's turning my well, trails a bit longer. So here's the fights on. Colt's a nice cooperative target. So we're trying to get at the 6k mark what it looks like with the 6k perch. Which it kind of does here. And just trying to slot inside the turning circle in the same turning circle uh, area that he is, which I am. That means I can hold the shot. And there's the kill. It's just about flying that 9k into the 6k, and then from there through the turning circle, and there to the saddle, and there to the gun skill. So we talk for a bit, the fight begins. So where you crank a bit more G, gets a bit tighter for me. I should probably not be flying so lead here, because I'm quite perpendicular, which as we saw means a ton of G is required in order to not flight path overshoot and all the G in the world won't stop that and that's about trying to catch up from here I don't think I ever catch up oh no this is where I oh yeah because I was saying um, this is what would happen if you did stay pure I remember yeah so this is what happens when you do stay pure so said that for this fight I'm just gonna stay pure like I'm trying to get this guy 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 and oh shit why why is he flying why is he walking away head? why no matter how hard I pull he's out of the HUD and now I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying and it's because these turning circles are all messed up and this is where I say hey Colt can you hold like a 4G pull and I'll see if I can tidy this up and so what I do is I just get the turning circles lined back up again it around here and then get the turning circles all nice and lined up and you can see that I'm basically hmm yeah basically flying inside the turning circle gets a bit aggressive here oh yeah this is where I'm saying you know we'll put the flares out to show that I am through the turning circle at this point and knocked it off right there Finn in any questions from the audience?